Okay. Yeah. So um, today we're going to prove bi periodicity. So I'll remind you what the unitary groups are. I'll um, state bi periodicity. Then um, we'll review bar constructions and the um, group completion theorem. And then I'll sketch a proof of bi periodicity. Um, yeah, this is like one of my advisor's favorite theorems. Okay. So, um, uh, UN is the, um, subgroup, uh, uh, is the subgroup of GLNC of, uh, of matrices that are equal to their conjugate transpose and by N matrices. Um, yeah, so you should think of this as this is like the complex analog of the orthogonal group. And um, so U1 is just uh, equal to S1. So it's, um, you know, GL1C is the non is equivalent to, you know, is isomorphic to the non zero complex numbers. And then this condition that they're equal to its conjugate transpose is like a. Um, uh, condition that these matrices are like basically isometries. Um, so, the, you know, this says that, hey, we're not just taking matrices with non-zero determinant, like, in, um, in particular, the determinant needs to be a, um, uh, have complex norm one. You know, so you should think of this as the, like, length one complex numbers. Okay. Um, yeah, and... If you have linear algebra questions today, feel free to ask them and someone will be able to answer them, may or may not be me. Oh yeah, so uh, the the inclusion of, of unitary matrices into all uh, invertible complex matrices is a, is a homotopy equivalence. So everything I say today, you can replace UN with GLNC. Uh, you know, here we're, we're viewing these as groups with their natural topology. Um, you know, they're as a subspace of C to the N squared. Uh, for some things, it'll be a little bit more convenient to deal with UN. Um, yeah, and the proof that this is a homotopy equivalence, everyone just says Graham Schmidt, and then you're like, what does that actually mean? Um, but I think I think Graham Schmidt tells you that um, that this group is basically this group cross. Uh, C to some power. You know, Graham Schmidt tells you how to, you know, take a invertible mat matrix and um, homotope it to a orthogonal matrix. You know, because what is GLN? It's the set of ordered bases. What is UN? It's the set of orthonormal bases where orthonormal is in the, the complex sense. And then it's um, um, so that gives you a map the other way, and then you can check that the fibers are contractible, that they're just products of C to the N. Okay. Um, yeah, and there, there's, there's a stabilization map from UN to UN plus one, where you just include, um, you include a matrix, an N by N matrix, and an N plus one by N plus one matrix, uh, just by adding zeros and ones. And this will preserve the property that the conjugate transpose is itself. Um, any questions? Okay. So, um, you know, this, this often homological stability theorems are hard. This, um, this particular one is easy, you know, maybe the number is wrong because I didn't copy it from somewhere, but, uh, you know, that this inclusion map induces an isomorphism on homotopy groups uh, in a uh, in a range increasing with n. So how do we prove that? Well, there's a um, there's a map from the uh, the um, unitary group on n plus one to the two n plus one sphere. So you just um, uh, you know, viewed as the unit length vectors in C to the n plus one. And what's the map? Well, this, you know, so function takes 
a matrix and outputs a vector, well, what do you do? You, you evaluate your matrix on this vector EN plus one. Um, and this will, you know, if the vector has length one, well, M is an isometry because it's in the unitary group. So it will preserve, you know, so M applied to a length one vector will have length one. So, you know, um, this gives you a function for, you know, it's like an evaluation map from unitary matrices to the, to a sphere. And then um, the observation is it's a fiber bundle and the fibers are U, uh, UNs cross C to the N. So, you know, or I guess the, the, the fibers are all homeomorphic to this. The fiber over E to the N plus one is maybe more naturally isomorphic to this. So how do we see this? Maybe I should have gone to a blank page, but um, you know, what, what this set here is the, the set of M such that M of EN plus one is EN plus one. So what does that look like? Well, it's matrices. I'll just write, you know, it's matrices. Um, that look like this, right? And, um, Like this thing, the thing I've circled in blue is in UN. And then um, these coordinates in green, the green coordinates are the copy of uh, C to the N. Yeah, so I guess what I'm saying is if you have a matrix in U to the N plus one and it takes EN plus one to EN plus one, so that's what uh, the space is. Then in the it's going to be block. You know, the, the last column is going to be uh, all zeros and then a one. And so then the uh, the top left n cross n block is just going to be a, in un. And then the um, the bottom row is going to be a one in the bottom right corner, but then just arbitrary complex numbers. So that um, that explains this homeomorphism. Uh, is that is, is this clear to people? Okay, so um, yeah, so the fibers are all homotopy equivalent to UN. Oh yeah, so as groups, like the fibers are actually groups, and it's probably a semi-direct product as groups, but as spaces, it's just um, a Cartesian product. Um, yeah, and so, you know, the, this, the homotopy equivalence between UN and the, and the fiber, the, you know, and then you include into the total space, this map is equivalent. This map is just this map T that we were talking about before. Uh, and then now you look at this, the long exact sequence in homotopy groups and, um, you know, the, uh, the, the base of this fiber bundle is a sphere. So the homotopy groups are zero in a range. And then the fiber, the fibers aren't literally UN, but the fibers have the same homotopy groups as UN because the C to the N doesn't contribute anything. So, um, you know, we get in a range, we get zeros, and then um, this map is an ISO. Okay, so, you know, unlike stability for configuration spaces, um, this is not that bad. Okay, so, um, yeah, so what does this tell you? Well, we said U1 is, is um, a circle. So, you know, it tells us that Z is isomorphic to pi one of UN for all N starting at one. You yeah, know, great. Um, and so uh, the main thing we're gonna be interested in today is U. 
U is the um, the co-limit of all the UNs. You know, you, you, or you can think of just as the union of all the UNs. And then the, um, the corollary that the ith homotopy group of UN is isomorphic to the ith homotopy group of U, which you know, maybe we want to call U infinity. Uh, in this range. And um, uh, so th the um, these stabilization maps are nice enough that there's no difference between colim and homotopy colim in this situation. Or there's no, you know, up to homotopy. Um, yeah, so maybe I should have had this remark earlier because it would have maybe helped prove the corollary. Um, yeah, so... Uh, the goal for today is we're just going to compute the homotopy groups of U. The homotopy groups of each UN, other than, you know, and, you know, for N equals 1, the homotopy groups of, you know, the homotopy groups of U1 aren't that bad, but for N bigger than 1 but less than infinity, the homotopy groups of UN are not known because they're um, closely related to the homotopy groups of spheres. Um, but somehow, once you get to infinity, like enough things cancel, and then you can actually completely compute the homotopy groups. Yeah, so that somehow it's not 100% true, but it's like close to true that the only things where we can completely calculate the homotopy groups um, are infinite dimensional. Okay, the circle is a counterexample, but it's close to close to true. Um, yeah, so, uh... Can you remind me what the homotopy colon is? Uh, is this true? is... You... You know, you have some space X. I don't know, I'll just draw this picture. Um... Oh, yeah, so you, it's, you, you have... You know, if you have like x1 maps to x2, maps to x3, maps to x4, dot, 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 then the homotopy colim, you know, and it depends on the maps, but, um, um, you know, the maps are suppressed from the notation, but, you know, you need the maps. This is going to be like um, uh, the distribution union of xi cross an interval, um, modulo an equivalence relation. And the equivalence relation is going to be that you glue, um, you know, so the, you glue um, one end of the cylinder onto, you know, onto xi minus one, and then you glue the other end of the cylinder, or sorry, yeah, yeah I guess you, you glue one end of the, you glue like the right end of the cylinder onto x i plus one using the map. So you know, like this here is a picture. This part is like x zero cross an interval, and then this is this part is like x one cross an interval. And we use the function to do the you know, we use the function from x zero to x one to do the gluing here. And then you use the function from x1 to x2 to do the gluing here, etc. So it turns out that if, if the functions are all co-fibrations, you know, so with some homotopical version of being injective, then the co-limit, which is basically just the union, um, you know, the, co the co-limit under injective maps you can think of as a union. Um, so, you know, if the maps are co-fibrations, then the homotopy co-limit has the homotopy type of just the union. So you can, like, shrink down all these interval coordinates, and you end up just, like, taking the union of all your spaces. But if, you, if your maps aren't, like, um, you know, aren't injective plus some more conditions, then, um, then this homotopy co-limit's better behaved. Does that answer your question or? Yeah, yeah, that gives me a, a good idea of what it is. This is the first time that I see it, to be honest, but um, I think I understand what you what you meant. Yeah, so I mean, the point is like, it's not, um, 
it's not true that the homology of like a the homology of a colimit isn't going to be the colimit of the homologies in general, but the the this homotopy colimit will have that property. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, so, okay, oh yeah, so this theorem of Bott says that the, um, the homotopy groups of U are equal to the homotopy groups of U with a shift. So, um, you know, it's sort of a, a weird theorem. Um, yeah, and so, you know, it lets you calculate the, um, all the homotopy groups because I guess we know pi zero, pi zero is zero because you know all the UNs are connected, and we computed pi one because we knew what U one was, and we had stability, so we knew what, so yeah, we knew that U one was a circle, and then stability told us that pi one of all the U's were Z, so you know, this theorem that um, gives you a complete calculation. Um, you know, because it's easy to compute the zeroth and the first, and then this tells you that tells you that tells you everything. Um, yeah. So great. So yeah. So we're gonna try to prove this theorem. We're gonna give like a modern proof that was looks like roughly copied from a paper of Mark Barron's and um, uh different paper of um, Bruno Harris. Um, it's the, the original proof used um, used Morse theory. Um, yeah, and like, basic the original proof was basically, like you um, so you know, Morse theory is like you have a manifold and you can function, and then you can compute the homology of the manifold using the critical points of the function. And then the, the idea was like, okay, the manifold is going to be the loop space of U. And then we're going to, you know, which isn't a manifold, but we can approximate it by manifolds. And then our function is going to be like the length of the, um, uh, the length of, um, of paths. Or maybe it was path space, I don't know. Um, and so then the critical points are going to be geodesics because those are going to like minimize length. Um, I think it's actually something closer to like length squared. But, um, you know, the, the critical points will still be geodesic. So then you can like, understand homology by like, figuring out what geodesics are. And um, yeah, so you know, it's a very cool proof. I recommend people read it in um, like in Milner's, um, Milner has a Morse theory book, one of these little orange books. Um, yeah, so um, you know, it's one of those theorems, like the Atiyah Singer index theorem or something where you, you know, even if the first proof is great, you still want like lots of different proofs of it. Okay, so um, yeah, so whatever, we don't like statement, you know, uh, this is a statement about groups, we like statements about spaces. So the theorem we're going to prove that immediately implies bot periodicity is that you that has the homotopy type of the twofold loop space of U. Uh, you know, and loops, you know, shift homotopy groups, so this will immediately imply bot periodicity. Um, great. So, you know, that's why this is a theorem that, like, plausibly I should talk about in the class, because at least the title of the class has loop spaces and the statement of the theorem has loop spaces in it. So, okay. So, uh, I guess seven years ago, I was, um, I ran like this uh, as a postdoc at the Cooney Graduate Center, and I was running this um, like uh, internal learning seminar on roughly the same topic as this course. And um, someone who you might know, like I wrote, you know, I convinced Manuel to give a talk, and this is the uh, the abstract of his, his talk on bot periodicity in my seminar about like loop spaces and operads. 
Um, so yeah, so Manuel wrote a, a wise man who rides a motorcycle once told me if you want to prove something is homotopic to a loop space or something else, instead prove something else is homotopic to the classifying space of something. Bot periodicity is the statement that something is the twofold loop space of itself. You get the idea. Okay. Um, and you know, the uh, this abstract is still on my website. The link broke because the guy moved, um, who rides a motorcycle moved um, moved to Denmark and um, left Stanford. Um, but you know, this is, this is a picture of Soren Glacius on a motorcycle. Um, yeah, I used to play ultimate frisbee on these fields, but it was dangerous because like the sidewalk was like the the boundary lines, and um, yeah. Okay. So great. Um, yeah. So, but um, what Soren slash Manuel said is that so we want to show this. Well, the bar construction is basically the inverse to the um, the looping. So instead, we're gonna you know instead of showing that if you take b squared to both sides, you'll get you know u is b squared loops to u um, and then that will um, and then we then we want to um, okay wait, this is no conditions but then we want to show um, you know so we want to show that to show that like So, yeah, so the, this equality we always have, and then we want to prove like this equality. I don't know, this doesn't seem helpful. Yeah, so I guess to prove this equation, we just need to prove b squared of this equation. So b squared will cancel the loops too. So we just need to show, you know, that u is equivalent. Um, to b squared u, but then there's some, um, you know, remember that b um, loops shifts homotopy groups one way, b shifts homotopy groups the other way. Um, we're actually going to show this statement. There's this z here. Um, you know, if I got rid of this z, it would just be b squared is u. This z has to do with, um, like, pi zero is wrong because, um, like, you know, the loops in B aren't quite inverses or aren't inverses on spaces that aren't connected. Um, so, you know, that's just some like technical thing, but morally we're just proving this by proving, um, proving this statement here. Yeah, which this statement isn't true, but when you cross with Z to fix pi zero somewhere, um, um, then it's true and it implies that. Yeah, you know, because you know, if you have this statement, you can loop it once. That'll cancel the Bs and you get a loop here. And then you can loop it again. That loop won't see the Z because it only sees the connecting component of the base point and will cancel the B and then you get a loop squared. Great, that's sure perfectly legible. Okay, so this is what we want to prove. Um, and then we'll need to understand, um, to make sense of the statement, we'll need to uh, understand why it's a monoid. And there's a typo, what it is a monoid. Okay. So, um, yeah, here's how to make uh, monoids out of the unitary groups. Well, first, there's, a, um, there's this operation called block sum. You know that takes a matrix an n by n matrix and an m by m matrix and builds you an n plus m by n plus m matrix where you just put one of them in the upper left block and the other uh, other one in the lower right block. Um, and so um, um, this map induces a map on bar constructions from um, I'm missing a parenthesis. Yeah, so if you have a group like B of G cross H, you can check is same thing as BG 
cross pH. Um, so, you know, we have this homomorphism from this group to that group. So then we get, well, BUN cross BUM is the same thing as B of UN cross UM. And then we can, then uh, B is also functorial in group homomorphisms. You know, so if you have a map, if you have a group homomorphism from G to H, you get a induced map BG to BH. So um, using this functoriality and this um, compatibility with products gives us a, a map. So that makes the district union overall N of BUNs into a monoid. You know, because like the way you're going to multiply something in BUN times something in BUM is just use this map. And here, there's no, no reason why N can't be equal to M. Um, you know, one needs to check that it's going to be associative and has a unit, um, but you can do that. Any, any questions on why, why this thing's a monoid? Or just like, I should repeat stuff, or people are lost, or something. Okay. So, um, so it's, it turns out we can make BU into a monoid, but it'll be easier to work with this disjoint union of BUNs. Um, okay, so, yeah, so I guess here, so in this equation, um, you know, we have this Z cross BUN, and it's going to turn out that this is very similar, but not equal to, but, you know, very closely related to the disjoint union over N of BUNs. Um, yeah, so the, the topic for the next little bit is comparing these two things. So this up here is a space, pi zero is the natural numbers, and the connected components are different, um, but they all, um, but, you know, and this is another space, the connected components are all the same. And the and this and the set of path components is um, is uh, the integers, and so you should think of this this comparison is going to be sort of similar to like um, conf rn. Should think that this is analogous to like conf rn versus um, loops n s n. Um, yeah, and so somehow like in the limit, these spaces, you know, agree with, you know, the, or the connected components as n gets big, agree with the connected components here. Same thing happens here. And um, this is somehow enough that when you apply B to it, you, you get an equivalence. So in both of these, I guess down here we already have the B, but we'll just make it in blue. Um, so these two spaces aren't the same, but when you apply B to them, they become the same. Um, yeah, so this whole thing up here is the same as this whole thing down here, even though the thing in the parentheses is not the same and same up here. Um, yeah, it was like, oh, um, okay. Yeah, so this is a monoid, and um, we can make BU into a monoid. But we're, I think, I think we won't actually need to do that. Okay. Oh, yeah. So then the next thing is this monoid, which maybe I should have given a name for because it's kind of long. This monoid built out of BUNs, uh, it has two multiplication maps, right? Like, what are the two multiplication maps? Well, you can block some this way. But you can also block some where the Bs are in the top left and the As are in the right. So we just picked, like, first coordinate goes in the top left. We could have picked first coordinate or, you know, first matrix goes in the top left, we could have made 
first matrix go on the bottom right and second matrix go on the top left. So yeah, the proposition is that the, these two maps are homotopic. And uh, how do you prove that? Well, here's a, a lemma. Uh, so if if G is an G is an element of a group, then um, you can um, conjugation by G induces a a map on BG. You know, like why is that? Well, I said BG is functorial with respect to group homomorphisms. And conjugation by G is a group homomorphism from G to G. So it'll induce a map on BG. So the lemma says that map is homotopic to the identity. And the proof is you just you write down some explicit simplicial homotopy. Okay. Um, how do now how, using this lemma, how do we prove the proposition? So we need to show these two maps are homotopic. Well, the two maps differ just by conjugation by this matrix. So that proves they're homotopic. Yeah, so on the nose, this monoid isn't commutative, but it's commutative up to homotopy. And it's, um, it's in fact like, um, uh, there's an operad homotopy equivalent to, uh, or yeah, to the like uh, infinity version of the little cubes. So like little cubes of infinite dimension inside little cubes of infinite dimension um, that acts on this thing. So this is um, basically, it turns out that this is basically as commutative as it could be without um, actually being commutative. Okay. So the, um, I'm going to state the group completion theorem with some simplifying assumptions on pi zero. There's a, you know, there are more general statements. Um, so let M be a homotopy commutative monoid. So, you know, you should think M is going to be this thing built out of BUNs um, with pi zero, the natural numbers, and we'll let MN be the nth component. We'll fix M and M1, and then we'll let T be multiplication by typo by M1. Uh, and then we'll let M infinity be this homotopy co-limit. Then the theorem says... Um, yeah, so the uh, theorem says we have this homotopy commutative monoid, then um, Z cross M infinity is loops BM. Um, yeah, so we're going to think you're going to apply this to M is disjoint union N BUNs. Oh, yeah. Did I say what the output is? Oh, yeah. So, the, the, so then there's a map from Z cross M infinity to loops BM. So if you have a loop space, all the connected components all the path components have the same homotopy type. Um, so, and, uh, you know, if you, uh, you know, it turns out that I guess pi one of loops BM is going to be um, what's called the, you know, the growth and group. Of M. Did I talk about growth and deep? I feel like I talked about growth and deep groups at some point. This is pi zero. So if you have a monoid, the growth and deep group is you, you take your monoid and you just formally adjoin inverses. Um, so like pi zero of loops BM is going to be a group because it's pi one of BM and pi, pi ones are always groups. Um, so we started out with with something with pi zero. The you know we started with m that has pi zero the natural numbers, and then you do this construction, and you're going to get something with pi zero a group. Well, what is it? It's just going to be the growth and decrease group of n, which is z. So um, these two spaces have the same connected, the same set of path components, and then what it's saying is, each path component is just like you take the path um, the, the sort of the, the path components are going to be basically the limit as n goes to infinity. Um, yeah. Um, since there was two observations, this z cross m infinity, this is the, this is like the home, um, or m infinity is the homotopy co-limit of the mn's. If you want, you can view this z cross m infinity as just this homotopy co-limit of the m's under this map. 
And then the, uh, the next observation is that the homology of this space is just the homology of M localized at pi zero. So what this is saying is that loops B, if you, know, if you plug in a group, loops B doesn't change the homotopy type. This is saying if you plug in a monoid, loops B will change the homotopy type, but its effect on homology is just going to be localized at the um, at pi zero. So, you know, if you had a group localizing at pi zero wouldn't do anything because these would already be uh, invertible. But if it's not a group, well, then these have to be invertible. So you invert them and that's that's all you do. Um, OK. Um, I talk pretty fast. And there's a lot going on in this slide, so I'm happy to say something slower or repeat something. Um, Why is it called the group completion theorem? Th this theorem is called the group completion theorem. Yeah, but, but why? Well, oh, well, so what, like, if you, let's delete everything. Um, so, I mean, I mean, sometimes this growth, you know, this growth and deconstruction is, um, you know, it's like, this is like um, this. Um, it's you know, it's like if you have a discrete group, this turns. Um, or you're sorry. Let's say let's say M is if M is a discrete monoid, then this is the sort of the smallest way to build a group out of M, right? Yeah. Sure. sure. Yeah. So what this theorem is saying is, okay, you take now. Let's, what happens if you take a topological? Oh, oh. So if you have a discrete group, if you have a discrete group, sorry, if you have a discrete monoid, I'll just write something. Um. So like, if M is discrete, then um, then you can show that the growth and degroup of M is equivalent to loops B M. So, um, th like this, um, this space here isn't going to be discrete, but all the connected components are going to be discrete, or all, all the connected components are going to be contractible. Um, so, like, if you plug in a monoid BM, if, 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 if M is discrete, or, you know, so let's say if M is a group, then BM uh, is, a, is a K M1. But so then like Omega BM is a K M0, which, you know, which just means all the connect, you know, all the connected, all the connected components are contractible, and the set of connected components is M. Um, so it, you know, if that makes sense. is if M is a discrete monoid, then it turns out that B M is going to be a K growth and group of M. Wow. Right, because like the fundamental group needs to be a group. So like, what group is it? It's just the uh, take your monoid and turn it into a group. You know, and, and this is, uh, you know, K growth and group of M zero. Um, so, what, what, so yeah, so if you have a discrete monoid up to homotopy, the a way you can do, you know, the way you can do growth and deep groups, the way, you know, if you're, I mean, 
if you're if, if you like bar constructions and loop spaces, well, you can just say, hey, the growth neat group is just loops B of your monoid. Like up to homotopy that will work, you know, that will give you the right answer for discrete monoids. Or, you know, yeah. Like it's literally true, you know, pi zero of M, but pi zero of omega BM is going to be the growth and degroup of M. And, you know, if M is discrete, the connected components of omega BM are going to be contractible. So all the information is in pi zero. So, you know, this growth and degroup is, is, is uh, sometimes just called group completion. So um, you should think of like in, in homotopy theory, this loops B is the correct version of growth and degroup for topological monoids. So this theorem tells you like, okay, now let's assume, let's drop the assumption that our thing is discrete and just say, hey, we have an arbitrary monoid. What does taking loops B do? And the theorem, you know, we can rewrite it. One, one version of this theorem, if you like combine the remarks, this says that the homology of omega BM is, well, it's not quite the homology of M. It's the homology of M with um, I zero of M inverted. So, you know, so it's, it's saying like, what's the homology of this homotopy group completion of M in terms of the homology of M? And what it says is it's just, you take the homology of M and you localize it at, um, um, I zero. Yeah. So remember the homology of M is a ring because M is a monoid. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So it's pretty much saying that when you try to find the homology of this uh, growth in the group or, or okay, this generalized case, this uh, omega. Yeah, uh, yeah this the topological group, version can, of the growth in the group. Yeah. yeah, you can localize outside or I mean like find the inverses outside the homology. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Just saying, you know, like the, doing growth in the group is like you're adding inverses. Uh, and so here it's saying you add inverses to pi zero. Pi zero is like a sub ring of the homology. So, you know, the, the, the problem is like if M is not a group, pi zero might not be a group. But just like add in the inverses. So like, like localization is like a analog of growth and deep group except in rings, you know, like you should think like the field of fractions is like a growth and deep group, you know, in rings. But it, what, it, what it's saying is, hey, this omega B basically just add, adds inverses to pi zero. So it's going to make, all, it's, you know, it's going to replace pi zero with the growth and deep group, and it's going to make all the connected components the same and equal to like the limit as n goes to infinity of the connected components. Yeah. Okay. So any other questions or comments on this theorem? Um, yeah. Uh, I, I should have had like day on the um what's, what's sort of weird what's mysterious is that uh this loops b makes the homotopy groups crazy like um so i'm just going to define algebraic k theory for no reason and then i'll probably run over but people can just leave so uh let's say for r a discrete ring um, KI, let's say I'm going to get K zero wrong. Um, uh, KI of, um, R is pi I of omega B M with M, the disjoint union of, um, I guess you don't need it to be discrete, but this is this is algebraic K theory. 
uh, B, G, L, N, R. So like block sum makes B, G, L, N, R into a, um, uh, into a, a, a ring. And so the algebraic K theory groups, which are these like very weird groups that have, you know, they're, they're like, they're impossible to compute, but they're very important in number theory and algebraic geometry and theory of manifolds and lots of other things. Um, um, yeah, they'd be more, they'd be more important if we could compute them, um, are just like the homotopy groups of this omega BM. And so, uh, what's weird is, you know, if, if R is a discrete ring, then like pi I of M is zero or I bigger than one, because, you know, BG is just an Eilenberg McLean space or GLN. Or, you know, BGLNR, you know, GLNR is a discrete group. When R is a discrete ring, that's how I'm viewing it. So these are just, they have no homotopy groups above degree one. But when you perform this loops B construction, you just magically get homotopy groups out of thin air almost. Um, yeah. And so, um, like, it, you know, so it's, Whatever. Um, this is three minute. What is algebraic K theory? But uh, sorry for the digression. Um, okay. And so this is very related to topological K theory. What I'm talking about today, but I'm not going to get into that. Okay. So yeah. So this theorem. So the probably like. I guess the punchiest way of saying it is the homology of this is that, but, um, you know, if you want statements about spaces, then this is the statement. And the way you prove this is like with homology vibrations. The title of the paper, I think, is Homology Vibrations and the Group Completion Theorem. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so, okay, the next thing we'll need is this um, homework exercise from um, 571. Uh, I think probably in 571 it was, the assumption was that M was a topological group, but, you know, all you need is that it's a monoid with pi zero group um, that says that uh, pi one is, is abelian. I one of a topological group is abelian, and more generally, a topological monoid with pi zero a group. Okay. So yeah. So what does all this tell us? It tells us that Z cross B U is equivalent to loops B um, disjoint union B U Ns. Or you know, I guess as I wrote it the other way. Um, like this. So, you know, the, the like Z cross BU and disjoint union of BUNs aren't the same, but like after applying B, they become the same because that like inverts pi zero. Uh, okay, so what how, how, proof? Well, the group completion theorem tells us that. Uh, the map goes the other way. There's either not, you know, there's either not a map or it goes this way. Yeah. Monoid. Wait, no, 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 the map goes this way. Yeah, okay. So the group completion theorem tells us that this is a homology isomorphism. So this U U is like this M infinity thing. Um, and then um, it's, you know, the general fact that if you have a homology isomorphism between spaces that are simply connected, then it's a homotopy equivalence. This is like a relative Horevich theorem um, that tells you basically, you know, the Horevich theorem tells you if the homology is zero in a range, then the homotopy groups are zero in a range assuming pi one is trivial. 
we have like a version for maps. Um, and then I guess pi one of Z cross B U N. Sorry, C cross B U is well, it doesn't see Z, so it's just pi one of U, which is pi zero of um, is this right? Uh, yes. Pi one of B U is pi zero of U. That's the way it shifts. So then it's um, zero. Um, yeah, and then um, this. Uh, so this says that the, the the left side is simply connected. The right side is also simply connected because basically the upshot of this calculation and this like math 571 homework exercise is that um, um, I'll get confused if I read this. Okay, so what's the idea? The idea is that if you have a loop space, then it's a it's a monoid with pi zero group. So that automatically tells you that pi one tells you that pi one of this space is abelian. So pi one is equal to h one. Well, so pi one of this space is equal to h one of the space. This maps homology isomorphism, so it's equal to h one of this space. We just said pi one of this space vanished. So h one of this space vanishes, which is equal to h one of the space which then is equal to pi one because it's a loop space. I think that's what I wrote here. Uh, it looks more complicated here. I can repeat it or just, you know. Okay, I'll just, I'll call this the right side. I'll call this the left side. The idea is um, R is a loop space. So, I one R equals H one R. That's what this homework exercise said. At least, you know, there's uh, some subtlety that this you need things to be connected. So just like pick a connected component, um, and then you know H H one R equals H one L by the group completion theorem. And then, you know, I1L is zero, so H1L is is zero by uh, Hrabich. So that's the proof. You need to be a little bit careful because these things aren't connected, so you get connected components, but. Okay. Um, yeah, so then both of these spaces are simply connected. And then it's a homology isomorphism between simply connected spaces, so it's a homotopy. So, oh yeah, any questions? Okay, so our old strategy to prove about periodicity was to show, so we want to show this, instead we're going to show this. Well, we now we just need to show that um, B of district union Bs is U. And I'm going to run over um, Feel free to leave early. Okay, so um, yeah, proof is just like uh, oh yes, we just showed loops B of uh, or we showed loops of this is loops of, of that. Um, so, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, and basically the idea is that looping is always an isomorphism, except, you know, as long as you keep track of connected components. Okay, so um, now we need sort of a Another model of BG. So there's a theorem that says if G acts freely on a contractible space, um, I guess here I'm thinking, oh no, G doesn't need to be discrete. And then, um, and if uh, this tactical condition that E, so E is a, those typo spaces, well, um, then if the projection map from E to E mod G is a vibration, then E 
is equivalent to the E mod G is equivalent to BG. Yeah, so it's saying like if you want to build a model of um, of BG, just find a contractible space with a free G action, uh, and then the quotient will be BG. You know, there's this extra condition. There's lots of situations where this is automatic. Like if you have a compact group acting on a manifold or something, then this condition is or properly on a manifold. I don't know. Um, yeah. So why is this theorem believable? Well, what are the homotopy groups of E mod G? Oh yeah. So like, how would you you compute them? Yeah, so what does the long exact sequence in homotopy groups say? So I guess we have pi 1 e. Let's say pi i e maps to pi i um, e mod g maps to the fiber. The fibers are going to be g's. Like if you have a, a group acting freely on a space, then, then the... Um, um, the fibers of the quotient map are isomorphic to the group. Uh, e. So, um, these two groups are zero. So that tells you that this is an iso. So that tells you that pi i of E mod G are just shifts of pi I of G. And that's what we want, you know, that's what BG does also. BG shifts um, homotopy groups. So this, you know, suggests maybe how you prove the theorem. Um, also, because you can sort of, you can compare E to this contractible space, which was like this configurations of points in an interval where they vanish on one side. Um, yeah, but at least this, you know. So, you know, this says that E mod G has at least the same homotopy groups as BG because it's just shifts of homotopy groups of G. Okay. So here's, here's a model of BUN. Um, so... Yeah, so we'll let embed CN, C infinity be the subspace of uh, linear maps that are um, isometric uh, injections. So, um, yeah, so think of C infinity as, um, you know, the co limit of C to the n's. So, like, C infinity is a complex vector space with a countable basis. You know, in functional analysis, you know, C infinity might mean, you know, like some Hilbert space or something. Like, I don't want, I just, you know, so it'll be uncountable dimensional as a non-topological vector space. Here, I'm just, I want something with a countable basis. Um, basis in the, like, non-topological vector space sense. Um, yeah, and then this Grassmannian is just going to be the space of embeddings mod un. Oh, yeah, so we're defining this. So this is the Grassmannian of n planes in C infinity. It's just the quotient. So what you should think of this embedding space is the space of n planes in C infinity, but they come with a parameterization. And when you mod up by un, so un is acting on C to the n, it just becomes unparameterized planes. So this is just the space of uh, n-dimensional planes in C infinity. And then the proposition is that BUN is isomorphic, or you know, that BUN is homotopy equivalent to GN. And the way you prove that is just by proving that the space of embeddings is contractible. And the way you would prove that is um, you would, you know, plug in like CM where M is finite and just show that this is highly connected. Um, Um, yeah, I don't remember how to do that, but the, you know, the heuristic is like the space of things, you know, the C infinity is big, so you sort of have a lot of room 
if you have a family of planes moving around, you somehow always will have extra dimensions to unwind your family. Okay. Um, yeah, so, um, too much on this slide. So we're gonna let um, x n1 dot 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 np be the subspace. So this uh, so this is going to be the space of planes v1 through vp that in c infinity that are all orthogonal to each other, and vi is ni dimensional. Yeah. So it's the subspace of the product of all of these Grassmannians where the planes have, are mutually orthogonal to each other. Uh, yeah, and this x n1 dot 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 np gives us a model of bu n1 cross dot 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 bu np. Um, because, um, you can know, serve to a similar argument. You can look at the space of of embeddings of, uh, of this should be a p um, space of embeddings of n one of oh, sorry c to the n one crop comma dot 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 c to the n p. You can look at the embedding space of embeddings of this space into c with the condition that they're all orthogonal and check that this is. Um, Contractible, and then you, um, you know, it has a free action by this product of unitary groups, and the quotient is this space. Okay, so the um, um, you might say like, where did where did this thing come from? Th these things are going to show up when you write down the formula for B of this monoid built out of uh, BUNs. Okay. Um, so let's let's review like a little bit of linear algebra. Um, yeah, so what it says is, so if M is in, um, uh, if M is a unitary matrix, then it has an orthonormal eigenbasis and the eigenvalues have length one. Um, yeah. And orthonormal now means in the complex sense. So this is what the spectral theorem says. This is the main reason why we're using UN instead of GLNC, even though they're homotopy equivalent. Um, so yeah, so the corollary of the spectral theorem is that uh, a matrix is determined by a configuration of points in S1. Um, with uh, that are labeled by subspaces v0 through vp where c to the n is uh, oh yeah and these subspaces should be mutually orthogonal to each other and c to the n should be a direct sum of these subspaces uh, yeah because i mean uh, a diagonalizable matrix is determined by its eigenvalues and its um, eigenspaces And uh, so the, the, you know, so we have points in S1 labeled by subspaces. The points in S1, draw a picture. The, um, the so the eigenspaces are the labels and the, um, the points are the eigenvalues. Uh, yeah, and then there's the assumption that all of these spaces are orthogonal to each other. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to think of the, um, we're thinking of these unitary groups kind of as labeled configuration spaces, uh, you know, spaces labeled by subspaces. And uh, collisions will be allowed, and I'll sort of talk about how to model that. So, okay, so let's let UP. Maybe it's a bad name, but 
u sub p instead of u parentheses p be the disjoint union of um, n1 through np of x n1 through np. So that, remember, going way too fast, so it probably don't remember, but this is this is like the set yellow is unreadable. Um, so like this is the set of V1 through VP. This is like the set of, um, of these, you know, with like VI inside C infinity. Um, you know, they're orthogonal to each other and um, like dim VI is NI. You know, this is the space of these things. So, um, yeah, so we're going to build a simplicial space um, out of these spaces x n1 through xp. And the face maps are going to be, well, we have a tuple of subspaces. You can just add them together. So you replace, you know, so just take adjacent, you know, the i face map is going to, um, going to uh, replace vi and vi plus one with their direct sum. And the degeneracy maps are just going to add in um, zero. Uh, the zero should be in the ith spot. That's a typo. Yeah. And so th this makes these form a simplicial space, which I'm calling U bullet. And then the, the proposition is that U the realization of U bullet is U. That's the proposition. And then there's sort of this remark that you can think of this realization as being a configuration space. So, you know, we have these, remember you can think of, you can think of BG as configurations of points. We're used to sort of thinking of BG as configurations of points in, um, in an interval labeled by elements of G. And then like if points collide, you add their labels. And if points hit an endpoint, they vanish. And if they're labeled by one, they vanish. And you know this um, corresponds to sort of the geometric realization. Well, there's nothing. Configurations of points in an interval where they vanish at the endpoints is the same as configurations of points in a circle where they vanish at one point in the circle. So here we're going to think of. So. Uh, if you're in U, U is the co-limit of the UNs. So what you are, or you know, so U is basically matrices that after a certain point, if you have a matrix in U, there's some finite portion where who knows what happens, and then it's just ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So in particular, all but finitely many of the eigenvalues of a matrix in U this of an infinite matrix in U are going to be one. So, um, yeah, so we have these finite vector spaces in C to infinity, these finite dimensional vector spaces in C to infinity, which are the eigenvalues of this top part. And, you know, this is the V0. I think maybe we should count from one. What's that out? You know, V1, V2, V3. Um, so we have the, the, these are the eigenspaces, sorry, and then where they're located is the eigenvalues. Um, yeah, and then um, what happens when these two points come together? Well, you just add, add you know, you just add their labels. Their labels are orthogonal subspaces of C infin infinity, so you just direct some of their labels. Um, so, you know, this is our model for U. And this should look a lot like B of disjoint union of BUs. 
Um, yeah, so here, here's a proof sketch. I'll just like end on time and then people can ask me questions or not. Um, so like it suffices to show, you know, show this equation. So we're going to, so this, this thing is a simplicial space and that thing is a simplicial space. So we're just, um, so, you know, the, the, the thing on the left, so, you know, remember that BM is a realization of a simplicial space with P simplices M to the P. So the P simplices of uh, the thing on the left are going to be these disjoint unions of N1 through NP of these products. Um, you know, and this, this thing we said has the homotopy type of, um, I guess what we were calling X and one dot, dot, dot. Um, yeah. So, so if you look at the, um, the space of P simplices of this U bullet, it's exactly the union of these. If you look at the P simplices of the left-hand side, it's exactly these, um, this. Um, and so um, they're uh, level-wise, they're homotopy equivalent. It's a little bit difficult to write down an explicit math. You, so I think the easiest way to do it is to, to come up with um, something that maps to both of them. Um, but basically, you know, this shows that so we want to show these two spaces are, are homotopy equivalent, and I've argued that at least they're realizations of simplicial spaces with homotopy equivalent spaces of P simplices for all P. And then just if you're a little bit more careful, you can um, uh, actually find a simplicial map that induces the, the level-wise equivalence. Um, so that shows bot periodicity. Um, 